Hey everybody, welcome to your pro trader tip. Today we are talking about probability in the marketplace. If you are liking what you are learning, press on that like button, press on the subscribe button, and you'll be getting more of this. So today we're talking about probability in the marketplace. So everyone always talks about risk reward, risk reward. I'm risking one to make five. And guess what? Risk reward in trading is pretty simple. It's simple math. If you graduated fifth grade, you probably can do the trader math that's necessary to figure out risk reward. What's much more difficult and what people don't spend a lot of time talking about is the other side of the formula, which is probability of success. Trading comes down to risk reward and probability of success. So for example, a lot of the best traders I've ever met are actually wrong more often than they're right. So how are they the best traders I've ever met if they're professional losers? Because their risk reward makes up for it. All the same, when we're thinking about probability in the marketplace, we want to be thinking about all of the different factors that can affect any trade that you're in. Because probability is a very dynamic concept in the marketplace as opposed to risk reward that's really straightforward. For example, one of the most important factors to pay attention to when you're thinking about probability is the market itself. If you are looking to go long a stock, an individual stock as an example, well, what's the S&P 500 doing? If the market is moving higher, if the S&P is going higher and you're going long a stock, you're gonna have a higher probability of success in trading. So it's key for any professional trader who's out there to be constantly studying the direction of the market so that you have an idea of the probability of any trade that you're taking. All of these different things that relate to probability in trading, we call those on my team layers of probability. So again, the market itself is one of the most important layers of probability. You're trying to go along a stock, market's crashing, that's a tough trade. You're trying to go along a stock, market's going up, that's an easier trade. There are a lot of different factors that are gonna influence any trade that you're involved in, but there are a few specific ones that can affect almost any stock trade that you get in. So one is the market, another is the concept of relative strength and relative weakness. If your stock or your sector is stronger than the market as a whole, you are going long relative strength, you're gonna have a higher probability of success. For example, maybe the market today is up a half a percent, but tech is up a full percent. And in tech, Apple is up a percent and a quarter. So Apple is a strong stock in a strong sector. I'll have a higher probability of success going long Apple today than if I was going long maybe the financials, which maybe are down half a percent. They're relatively weak to the market, which is positive on the day. Next, volume. We say volume in trading is confirmation. You don't need there to be perfect volume in order to make money in the market. But if you're taking a trade and you have the appropriate volume pattern for that trade, you're gonna have a higher probability of success because volume is confirming the move. For example, you're taking a simple breakout trade, whether or not that breakout is occurring on volume or not occurring on volume will mean a higher or lower probability of success on that trade. Next, news. Does this company have news? Does the market have news that's influencing the market as a whole today? If you are looking at a stock that had news, like an earnings report or an analyst upgrade or downgrade or just general news that's affecting that, that company's business, that stock will tend to have a higher range than it typically does. It will tend to trade on higher volume than it typically does. And that means that the trades that you're getting involved in are also gonna have a higher probability of success. Next, the concept of Time frame continuity. What is time frame continuity? Time frame continuity basically means that whatever time frame chart I'm looking at, I'm seeing the same exact picture. So, for example, I want to go long a stock. 
Well, that stock is trending higher on the weekly chart, trending higher on the daily chart, trending higher on the hourly chart, trending higher on the 15 minute chart, trending higher on the five minute chart. That's gonna be a long position that'll have a higher probability of success because I'm getting the same story from every time frame, as opposed to if I was going long the stock, which is downtrending on its daily chart, moving sideways on the weekly chart, up trending on the 15 minute chart and looks like it just topped on the five minute chart. So whatever time frame I'm looking at is giving me a different picture. Six, what time of the day is it? Most of my trades occur in the first hour of the day. Most of my best trades probably occur in the first 15 to 20 minutes of the day. And I spend a lot of the rest of the time managing that position. Why? The open is where price discovery is occurring for the market. Markets are thinner, they're less liquid. And that tends to mean that your trades in the beginning of the day are higher risk for higher reward, that lesser liquidity. But you also have institutions coming in right off the open who are positioning themselves long or short based on the new news or whatever happened with the market overnight. So the best time of day to trade, the highest probability time of day to trade is gonna be that first 30 minutes of the day. It's still pretty good to be trading from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern time. There's still a lot of institutional movement that's occurring, you still have good trending stocks. Then the third best time of the day to trade is the close, two to four. The institutions are coming back from lunch, we're getting price movements into the close, we're getting market imbalance information that's coming out that's affecting the market. The worst time of day to trade is the middle of the day. If you're taking a trade at somewhere between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S. equity market, you have a lower probability of success than if you were taking that same exact trade off the open. The volume tends to not be there. That's a lot of times when we see the market flatline. Of course, I'm just speaking in general terms here. Sometimes there's a news event that's occurring in the middle of the day that could put the entire market in play or what have you. But as a general rule, you're looking to take in a trade at about 12 o'clock. Think again, you're probably gonna have a lower probability of success on that trade. So it might not be the best time. The final layer of probability that we're thinking about with our trading is institutional positioning. And one of the readings that we can get on institutional positioning is through option flow. So on my team, we're constantly paying attention to large option flow orders that are coming into the market that can be a signal for what the big institutions are doing. It is very typical that when we see large and consistent bullish option flow coming into the market, that that stock has an up move. So if you're looking at a stock that's having that option flow come into it, you're gonna have a higher probability of success in that trade than you would otherwise. So to put all this together, when I'm thinking about getting involved in any trade, I'm not just thinking about that fifth grader math on risk reward, even though that's a big part of it. I'm also thinking about well, what's the probability of success on this trade? And the probability of success is really gonna be the number one determining factor on how much risk I wanna put on in any trade. So you wanna learn to internalize all of these layers of probability that we discussed today so that you can input that and think about it for any potential trade that you're taking. If you liked what you heard today, if you wanna learn more about this topic, click on the link below where you can become a part of my team or you can become part of the T3 training that we're offering.